Hello, welcome to Whale Chronicles, and this week's episode, Eye to Eye with Whales. M- most of our day-to-day work on the research boat is uh, trying to shoot ID pictures so we know who's who, uh, working on behavioral uh, shots or, or video of uh, singing whales or looking at female role and, and trying to show parts of that. And once in a while, we get to look a whale in the eye. In 1979, the same year I got my first work with humpback whales in Maui, I got my first big National Geographic magazine assignment. I got a year and a half to travel the world covering research on sharks for a story called Sharks, Magnificent and Misunderstood. Part of that work was looking at how sharks see and, and what they see. And, and though I was brought in by the science and the research with the animals, it wasn't just the study of the, the eye of the shark. It was looking a shark in the eye. And whether it's a little swell shark in a cave in, in California, or maybe something more dramatic like one of the big pelagic sharks that we think of as a, a threat in the sea, If we're ever going to understand animals, you really do have to look them in the eye. The real pioneer for shooting uh, whales for National Geographic was Bill Kurtzinger. And he did the early stories, the 1976 story of Whales in the World, uh, uh, the 1972 story with my father in Patagonia swimming with ripe whales, and uh, a big dolphin stories, and he was the first guy through, and he had a famous book that was revolutionary at the time about whales and dolphins and how it was to shoot them. It was Wake of the Whale. A Wake of the Whale was published more than 40 years ago, and we've learned so much more about whales and dolphins. People have continued to be really interested in the animals and know so much more about them, where they are and what they do. I still think those moments when you uh, have a chance to look them in the eye, it, it doesn't only move our understanding forward, it, it, it also has a, a big effect on emotional feelings about whales. And uh, as important as the science is, and that's what drives our boat, how we feel about whales is a big part of how we continue to uh, support them and hope that they're uh, successful in the future. I never really thought of myself as a natural history photographer. I I really thought I was a journalist trying to cover whale research. And in covering whale research, it wasn't just the people and the science and the tools they were using, but also the animals that that they were studying. And that said, I I certainly had those moments. I think it was Hal Whitehead who said I was... uh, uh, his job was giving you the big picture, and my job was giving you those those few moments that uh, that catch you not just for the scientific knowledge, but for the emotional hit that you get. Certainly, one of those biggest things is the luxury of being in a situation where you can take time and look into the eye of a whale or a dolphin and uh, and just wonder what they're thinking. Well, getting back to humpback whales, because it is humpback chronicles, one of the interesting things with whale lives is they're not always the same. Uh, One animal can be very stern uh, and have animals give you an idea they don't want you there, and it's very, very clear. Uh, On a happier note, other times you get an animal that's so curious and you look in that eye and it's just a great feeling that the animal's coming and and looking at you and letting you into their world, even for just a short time. Once in a while, you just get a curious whale. This is one of two whales that for some reason was just really interested in the boat or maybe the people in the boat. Uh, In the water, the whale would come up very, very close, very interested, come by and take a a great look. But one one of the things with with a a humpback whale is basically they can't swim backwards. But on the next pass, and this is slowed down because what happened only lasted about nine seconds, the whale came up. I'm I'm floating on the surface just with uh, a snorkel and one of the uh, few years where I was shooting some, some video. The whale comes up really close, takes a look, and sort of stops. 
and uh, right here you see that the, this first knuckle is maybe four feet away from the main body of the whale and the whale le leans into me and then picks me up on its pectoral so I'm just floating on the surface it's got his 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 fin under my 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 belly and then brings me up to take a closer look sort of like you'd pick up a grasshopper or something like that just to see what it is. Boy, it was just great. Once in a while, there's just a whale that seems as curious of you as we are of them. It, and beyond the science, there's a connection made that is really something profound. And it makes you wish that somehow, somewhere, some way, everybody could look into the eye of a whale. I'd like to dedicate this week's episode to the late Bill Scott, a banker from Bermuda, a board member and supporter for Whale Trust, a good friend, and the driver of the boat during the Friendly Whale episode from this week. Thank you, Mad Dog. Thank you all for your support. I was talking to uh, Ralph Pace today, one of our crew members, and talking about what we might do in Hawaii this year. And we don't know what we're going to do, but we're going to do the, all that we can, and uh, we'll do it with your, your help. Thank you very much.